John chapter 5 from verse number 1. Afterwards, Jesus returned to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish religious holidays inside the city near Sheep Gate was Bethsida Pool with five covered platforms or porches or dormitories or quarters surrounding it. Crowds of sick folks. Some we are lame. Some we are blind. Some we are paralyzed limbs. They lay on the platforms waiting for a certain moment of the water. Somebody tell me a certain moment. Please, if I tell you to say something, say it convincingly. Somebody tell me a certain moment. Let me hear it louder. For an angel of the Lord came from time to time and disturbed the water and the first person to step down in it after which was healed. One of the men lying there had been sick for 38 years. When Jesus saw him and knew how long he had been ill, he asked him, would you like to get well? I can't. The sick man said, for I have no one to help me into the pool at the movement of the water. Why I am trying to get there myself. Someone else always gets ahead of me. Let's hear Jesus. Because I'm, I'm preaching alongside with the choir. Did I not hear the choir today say, there is nothing impossible for the Lord to do. Let's hear Jesus say, Jesus told him, rise up, roll up your sleeping mat, or what I call the sick bed, and go home. Instantly, the man was healed. He rolled up the sleeping mat or sick bed and began to walk home, listing the problem of people around you. But it was on the Sabbath when this miracle was done. So the Jewish leaders objected. They said no. They said to the man who was cured, you can't walk on the Sabbath. You can't be healed on the Sabbath. It is illegal for you to carry this sick bed up. The man who had been healed told them his simple reply. He that has healed me, he told me to rise up and take up this bed and walk home. My God will heal me. He will lead me my Lord will lead me. He's a miracle God. This way is a high.
glorious king, the hour has come. I am that I am, the moment has come. Father, glorify your name even at this hour in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, do thy will as it pleases you even at this hour in the mighty name of Jesus. Be thou exalted because at this hour, O oh Lord, every soul here, O oh Lord, shall be touched, shall be transformed, shall indeed glorify your name at the end of this service. Blessed be your name, O oh Lord. Lifting up your servant into your able hand, use him, O oh Lord, as it pleases you this hour. Use him, O oh Lord. Heal every soul, mend every broken heart, and your name be glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. You can sit down. In the world we are living, it is cream and crop with hardship and sorrow. We are living in the world of incompleteness. A world of minus. A world when you have children, you don't have money to train them. A world when you have money, there are no children to enjoy it. A world when you see many beautiful ladies, even to their age of marriage, when a shooter comes, once another one will come, twice another one will come, and when she finally chooses one, and she'll be waiting for the D-Day, five minutes to the time of introduction, you will hear a phone call. I will explain. I will explain. Explain what? Disappointment. Something is behind it. We are living in the world where somebody will save some money and mow some blocks and dig a foundation. When, before he would invite his people, things were working well. But after the invitation, to do the foundation laying ceremony, or God. After that, he will give them goats, give them wine, give them food. I mean his own people. As soon as they are leaving that ground, the road closes. It becomes one year, one block. That is why you see many houses today incompleted, staying 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. Something is behind it. Even among the pastor's kids and the king's kids, we train our children to be useful. When we are here with them, they pretend to be useful. But when they go there, one demon will enter some of their friends to confuse them. You preach one thing on the altar. Another thing is being practiced by your own children. Something is behind it. Do you know that some people today that are drunk, People that overdrink themselves, that they do not intentionally drink, that somebody can concord them into drinking attitude so that they will become stupid without achieving something here on earth. Something is behind it. A man will grow up and marry to a beautiful lady and they will stay as husband and wife years after years. Waiting for the fruit of the womb. None is coming. Because somebody has vowed. Over my dead body. Will there be a cry of a baby. In this house. But today. I have a message. Mashandalaba. Today, I have a message. The Lord told me, Iroka, come to this church. You will see a man tied. You will see a woman tied. You will see a young boy tied. You will see a young girl tied. When you go there, stand at the middle of the church. Declare. And that is what I'm declaring today. I stand at the middle of this church to declare anybody here that is being tied, anybody here that 
is being hidden anybody here that is being desperate anybody here that is being pushed down by the reason of the anointing shall be raised 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 somebody shout at them seven times one two three four five six and seven somebody shout never again somebody shout never again somebody shout never again a man and 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 a man listen i want to tell somebody here sometimes and many a time people are tied and bound and they came mad they came. many a time people are tied and bound it takes a native doctor to tie you it takes a prophet to lose you and that is simple assignment the lord has given me this morning and i want to stand upon this high altar to declare to somebody in case you were tied before you came to this church you are not going a tied human being me somebody that you are sick does not suggest that you have no god and that god has kept quiet over your sickness does not suggest his weakness oh, oh god sometimes god will allow some sicknesses to linger for his glory to blossom and i'm talking to somebody here that that lingering sickness by the reason of today's gathering shall vanish i am anointed for today's service and it is for healing and deliverance so that if you are here somebody has compacted you somebody has hidden you somebody is sitting on you by the reason of anointing upon my head today you are exposed mercy and wisdom knew that his people would be sick he provided a solution and this solution was situating in Jerusalem listen there's a funny thing about this solution the solution was a pool dirty pool is somebody hearing me and this pool was not located at the gates of Jerusalem but at the backyard I am telling somebody this church is not at the main stream it's not at the main road but at the back road but look at one surprising thing about this church from now here believe what i'm saying any day any day you do not know what to do you are confused about your condition. The sickness has beaten you so much. And the things are pressing hard on you. Don't kill yourself. Here. Walk to this altar. Walk to this altar. If you want to lie down, lie down. If you want to stand up, stand up. If you want to kneel down, kneel down. Today, there is power in this altar. 
There is no need running from one prayer house to the other. The era is gone. I feel that many members of this church are going where there is no power. Whereas power is lavishing on this altar. I want somebody to test it today. After now, there shall be a testimony. Listen. The Bible said that that man, because God knows that his people will be sick, he provided a solution at the back of the temple. And because of number of people that are sick in Jerusalem, they built what we call dormitories. They built what they called quarters. And the Bible said, sick people, folk means crowd, multitude, we are lined up. Lined up. And everybody had an attendant. An attendant would mean everybody had somebody that would be helping him. Are you hearing me, somebody? There was a certain man. Somebody tell me certain man. Oh, these people are not convinced. Somebody tell me certain man. Certain man could be you. Certain girl could be you. Certain woman could be you. Certain boy could be you. Somebody tell me certain man. There was a certain man on a named person. Nobody knew his name. Nobody knew his name. And in fact, he didn't even know Jesus. Am I talking to somebody? Nobody mentioned his nativity. Nobody told us where he was coming from. But my problem is, we are there no people that brought him to the pool. It was people that brought him to the pool and abandoned him there. I've taken time to travel to pool of Bethsaida. I'm a traveler because I'm a scholar. I spend my money in traveling and reading books. I went to the pool of Bethsaida and saw that it was a small bushy area behind Jerusalem. The water is very dirty, muddy in color. And I saw at that place, they decorated that place where this certain man was staying for 38 years. Know that he was 38 years of age. He suffered from a particular sickness for 38 years. Listen, the irony of it. I asked the people around and it was deducted that these people that were there Others were helping them to be healed. But this certain man, whose people denied, did not have anybody to help him or to answer for him. For 38 years, he did not comb his hair. For 38 years, he did not shift from that point. Who is tied? For 38 years, he didn't shift from that point. For 38 years, he did not bath. He did not take his bath. I took that cognizance. For 38 years, he wore one dress. For nobody was attending to him. The Bible said, Jesus himself knew that he had been there for a long time. I am talking to somebody here. You see that your, that your condition had been registered in the presence of God. I am talking to somebody. Look at me. Anything I'm going to say now, you will not see this face again until it is fulfilled in your life. Look at my face very well. Look at it very well. Because you'll be seeing me either in the telly or you'll be hearing my voice or you know where I come from. Look at my face. I've removed my spectacle. Last thing. Anything I say. And you claim it in your behalf. You will not see this face again. Until it happens in your life. Can I hear a thunderous amen? 
the eight years, he was there suffering. Nobody gave him comb. Nobody gave him soap. Nobody shifted him. They told me that at the time, his skins began to peel. At the time, he began to stink. At the time, everybody that came close to him would be scared of his condition. But let me tell you, he that has allowed a mistake in your life has a solution for it. The Bible said, there was a tradition in the land of the Jews. What is the tradition of that pool? Every day, once in a day, the angel of the Lord, listen, oh, the angel of the Lord, anywhere you see it in the Bible, means Jesus. Anywhere you see the angel of the Lord in the Bible, it means what? Jesus. The theologians will call it Theophany. Jesus appearing in the form of an angel. What happens? Every day, once in a day, the angel of the Lord will come and stare the water. When he stares the water, come. Anybody that had any person to help him will be dragging him or kick him or push him, provided even you can drag him and throw him into the pool. Provided he's the first person. The Bible says, anybody that first steps into the pool is cured of whatever disease that is afflicted with. And I transfer that condition to this church now. Anybody here that ex will exercise the first hand faith, a faith that is undisturbed for any condition at all, anything you have brought to this place shall be taken care of. Shout that amen again. The Bible said that immediately, immediately, he will see that water. You will either carry him or you drag him or anything you put him in that place in order to make sure that he's healed. But in case somebody overtakes him and goes there, he will not be healed. And let me say this. God will ever have miracles and have extra miracles. You didn't hear me very well. God, your God, whom you have come to serve, even this morning, will ever provide miracles and provide extra miracles. He will have the miracles of the people that have faith and have the miracles of the people that are doubting. The Bible said, this man had nobody to help him. But one day, tell me one day, that one day is today. Shut up! That one day is today in your life. Stories are about to change in your life. Doors are about to open in your life. History is about to be written in your life. Can somebody stand up and shout? Ay, ay, ay. One day. One day, Jesus was not an idle man. And whenever Jesus has an assignment, no time will be against him. Am I talking to somebody? Listen what happened. Jesus did not have any time to spare. But there was a customer in the pool. And I guess Jesus' customers are here today. I wouldn't know who he is. I wouldn't know who she is. Listen, somebody. Bible said, that day Jesus was preaching in Capernaum. Hey. Amaram no gadi kolwe bube. Ezi chuku. Oge nye gi hi kurobya neba. Ezi chuku. Oge nye gi hi ryoroya. 
Listen, somebody. That day Jesus was preaching. Very serious in his evangelism. But there was a call from a customer. Who did not even know Jesus. You are here today. Just open your heart. The Lord will settle your case. I want to hear a bigger amen. Immediately, Jesus concluded his ministerial outing. He concluded his evangelistic problem and decided to go to Jerusalem. I want to ask a question. To go to Jerusalem to do what? That day was on a holiday. What would make Jesus go to Jerusalem? He shouldn't walk. He shouldn't be seen by people. But listen, I'm talking to somebody here. The Lord will change a tradition for your sake. You see you? The Lord, even now I'm touching this valley. If you had given birth to a baby before, maybe you struggled in the labor. But by my touching this tummy, when you go there, mark my word today. 25 minutes you are out of labor. Mark it. Take your time to the labor. Each time you went, you will go to the labor. Count the minutes. And you will know that God has his prophets. Hallelujah. Jesus concluded his evangelistic meeting and said whether there is a tradition or not humanity cannot contest with the divinity when humanity is in trouble humanity will take over am I talking to somebody when humanity is in trouble divinity will take over I see many troubled people here and I see divinity coming to take over. Sell your problem to the divinity. Sell it now. And by the reason of my calling, you shall not go home with that very problem. The Bible said, Jesus was going and I thought he would, you know, Jesus was a big man. Listen. The Pharisees knew him as a great teacher. In our own context, he was a professor. The Pharisees knew him as a great prophet. In our own context, he must be an archdeacon. Are you, are you hearing me? He, he, he was known. And so, there were two gates in Jerusalem. One is at the posterior. One is at the anterior. In front of the gate was decorated. So that the big men and Pharisees, Sadducees and scribes will be going through that place. But for poor people, they will come through the backyard. But there was something that dragged Jesus out of the major gate and brought him to the minor gate. Somebody! That man that was in the pool of Bethsaida came before other people. Look at what happens. He was here waiting for the steering of the water. People that came late will overtake him. Everybody that came will overtake him. Everybody that came will overtake him until he became the last. I want to charge somebody today. I want to encourage you today. Have we have people made you the last in the series? Has your condition placed you on the last list of the series? Are people mesmerizing you that they have cancelled your name in the list? Listen, that man had nobody to take him to the doctor or to take him to the angel to obtain his card. 
he was all alone. So when others overtook him, he became the back man on the bank bench. But something happened. Jesus decided to visit the pool. For what? For what? That day, the presence of Jesus sees the action of an angel. That very day, Jesus decided to come to the pool. The angel ceased to come. Am I talking to somebody? God is going to visit somebody. Even in your house. Even in your business. Even in your work area. Even in your farm hand. Somebody tell me, I hear you, brother. That day, the Bible said, Jesus was coming through the back door. Boy, give me that your chair. Yes, sir. He was coming through the back door. Put it here, my brother. Look at me. The very man, important man, without man, was in the chair like this. Because there are some conditions that will bend you. There are conditions that will deform you. People will see you straight, but in your mind you are bent. You don't think well again. The man was like this. And anybody that was here, he would tell the person, come, 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 come. Tell the home people that you have been here, that I'm still here. Has your story become constant negatively? By the reason of this message, it will change. Oh, it will change. I say it will change. The man was there. Jesus came. And people that saw him from the back, they were greeting him. Because there were people that saw him as he was coming. Who were well to look back. But that man was not well to look back. Is somebody hearing me? It was people that were in front that cited Jesus. And they were saying, Rabbi, Rabboni, prophet, a liar, a liar, a liar, halal, halal. That is Greek. Halal, halal Yahweh, halal Yahweh. The Bible said, when they were shouting, the certain man was quiet. Jesus left other people and came to the certain man. Hey! 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 I see the Holy Spirit making a selection. He will lose number one. He will lose number two. He may be coming to number 20. He may be coming to number 25. He may be coming to number 30. Leaving every other person. Because he's stressing you, he shall see you. Because he's stressing you, he shall locate you. Because he's stressing you, he can find you. Because he's stressing you, he can catch you. Somebody stand up and shout, Amen and Amen and Amen and Amen and Amen. Come on. He went to the man. I said, Young man. Hey. Young man. Would you like to be well? <laughs> the young man laughed. Listen, you didn't know this one. You have been interpreting it one-sided. The young man laughed. He said, Oga, I can see your apron. I can see your way. I can see your outfit. You do not dress as somebody that knows this very pool. Oga, this place is called healing pool. Not swimming pool. Is somebody hearing me? Because it's, it's, it's possible that a visitor can see people lying there. They, they, they will think that they, they have come to swim. But the man told Jesus, this is not a swimming pool, but a healing pool. Okay? Healing is being done once in a day. Okay? It is not ordinary doctor that 
operates here. Okay? It is angel that operates here. But okay, let me tell you, it is once a day. Okay, look at as many as we are. We are waiting for one single healing. Because an angel was involved, the healing was incomplete. Many people were waiting for the healing. But the healing was limited to one person. Okay? I have been trying. Trying from the first day I came here to dash into the river. I have struggled and struggled to go into the river. I could not because I have nobody. You see where I have nobody came. Not that he asked him, will you, have, will you like to be here? He said, I have nobody. No. It's not true. There was an interlude of discussion. There was a mid discussion that led to I have nobody. Is somebody hearing me today? Maybe you must have argued with God about your condition. You told God, this one you are asking me, do I want to be healed? God, don't you know that this thing is caused by human being? God, don't you know that my people do not want me to progress? God, don't you know that they are after my life? God, don't you know that if I do not stay here, they will kill me? But let me tell you, no matter the reasoning you presented for God, he is about your healing. Am I talking to somebody? Am I talking to somebody? Listen. Listen. The Bible said, he said, oh God, I have nobody. When I wanted to go to this pool, I could not go because I had nobody. Jesus asked him again, do you want to be healed? He said, yes, I will. Do you want to be healed? Yes, I do, but I can't. Two answers. At the same time, if you have a correct Bible. Do you want to be healed? Yes, I do, but I can't. Yes, I do, because my condition is not palatable for me. But I can't, because there is nobody to help me. Do you want to be healed? Yes, I do, but I can't. Do you want to be healed? Yes, I do. No, I can't. Jesus said, Your case is different. Your case is different. That was Jesus saying it. Your case is different. I am talking to somebody. That somebody died in your family at the age of 30 does not mean you are going to die at that age. Your case is different. That the members of our family are cursed does not mean you'll be cursed. Your case is different. My sisters do not get married. Does not mean you will not get married. I am going to dichotomize between you and your sisters. I am going to dichotomize through the word of God between you and your brothers. I am going to change your history between you and your relations through the word of God. And you shall know you have a God. Yeah. Young man, your case is different. Young man, your case is different. Listen to me. Listen to me. Jesus told him, the pool is a symbol. Ah. The pool is a symbol of healing power. The angel is an ambassador and not the real person. Am I talking to somebody? The people that came before you had to struggle to the pool because the pool was a symbol. The people 
people that came before you and that, 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 that we are healed before you, we are healed by, by the angel. That was why they were struggling. But now, because your case is different, now, because your case is different, you are no more going to the pool. I am the pool. I am the pool. Young man, I say unto you, rise up. He rose. Carry the mat. He carried it. Begin to walk home. He began 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 to walk. Somebody shout hallelujah. Upon this altar, I stand today to tell you that chair, that sick bed, that closed door that they have been experiencing by the reason of this message, your story is changed. Your method is changed. That sickness is taken out from you. The closed door is opened ajar. Your work has been restored. Listen, somebody. Listen, somebody. I am not seeing many grown-up girls here. Single. Look at what I'm seeing from this altar. All gay men at church are seeing no men. It will happen in this so tell me it don't happen. These people, they don't have the faith I need. No matter your age. No matter your age. No matter your age. By the reason of this message, there's going to be a wedding trend. A wedding trend. After one person, another person. After one person, another person. After one person, another person. You will wait in chains. You will wait in chains. You will struggle for days. Somebody shout, ah, yeah, yeah. Something happened. When he carried the chair, the sick bed, and was going, he didn't remember that it was on a Sabbath. Listen to me. Listen to me. Can you point your hand to me? By the reason of this connectivity, God will erupt a miracle in your life that you will forget the date of the day. You don't understand me. You don't understand me. By the connectivity of these hands, God will erupt a miracle in your life and you shall forget the date of the day. Somebody shout a thunderous amen. That day was on a Sabbath day. Ordinarily, on a Sabbath, you do not carry anything. Ordinarily, on a Sabbath, you don't walk around. But because of the surprise, because of the level of the miracle, the man forgot it was a Sabbath day. He began to walk freely. Today, your miracle will give you freedom. Oh. Listen, listen. Look at what happened. The very man took his bed and was going. Took his bed and was going. Something happened. You know that some of his elders, some of his big uncles had wanted him to be there. Maybe they'd be using him as coronavirus patients to get aid from the government to attract aid from the government but that day the great healer Jesus said using my child in exchange of palliative is ended I am talking to somebody today nobody will use you as an error nobody will use you as a palliative as he carried it the chair going going the wicked uncles saw him with frowning face. Hey, hey, hey. 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 You know her. Hey. Where are you going? Don't you know that to 
today is Sabbath. Reverend, member, deacon, where are you going? And they ask him, who goes there? On the edge. Ah, ah, ah. Who goes there? On the edge. Listen, we are going to develop elephant skin. No devil will take us for a prayer. Oh, no devil will intimidate us from now. He was moving, moving. They asked him, Who goes there? On the edge. He was not listening to them. Who goes there? On the edge. I say, I mean the elders. We are asking him, who goes there? On the edge. When he finally stopped and said, let me know what these people are up to. They asked him, do you know that today is Sabbath? He said, I don't know. That one concerns you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Do you know that today is Sabbath? He said, I don't know. What I know is the miracle. You shall know your miracle. You shall know your Jesus. You will remember his word. They asked him, do you know that it is not lawful for you to walk on the Sabbath? And I asked them, were you in your house and this man came to you? Did you, did you not walk from your house and met this man? Are you hearing me, somebody? Do you know that it is not lawful for you to walk? The man said, I don't know. The only thing is that my miracle has given me freedom. And that is why I am exercising it. If God has given you freedom, exercise it. Am I talking to somebody today? He carried it. And they asked him, do you know that it is illegal for you to be healed? Uh oh. Uh oh. Do you know it is very much illegal for you to be healed and to carry this thing along the way? Look at what he told them. Oh, how I wish that everybody here will have this answer as you are going home. He said, Oh boy, excuse me. Sars, excuse me. Elders, excuse me. DBS, excuse me. Witches and wizards, excuse me. He that has healed me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He that has healed me. He himself told me, Rise up and I rose. Carry this bed and I'm carrying it. Walk home and I'm walking home. Today, you shall walk home with victory. Today, you shall walk home with healing. Today, you shall walk home with open doors. Today, you shall walk home with a testimony. Today, you shall walk home with a testimony. Somebody shout amen and amen and amen and amen. Listen. 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 Before I conclude. Look at this man here. I didn't come out like this. No. Mommy, I was not like this. Yes. I was even a stammerer. <laughs> you know now, I was a stammerer. <laughs> God can touch the tongue. He told nurses, he that clothed the tongue is with the, is with the mouth. He can change you. And that is what I believe. Am I talking to somebody? My uncles caged me. They first of all caged my elder brother. We are only two. My elder brother, who was a manager in a company, was tied and he became local women Gary Fryer. You didn't understand me. My elder brother, the same father, the same mother, was a manager in a company and they caged him from the village. He became a local woman or local women Gary Fry Fryer. What does that mean? Every day from Monday to Friday and Saturday, 
he will go from family to family and ask them, do you have garlic to fry? You know, men are wicked. And that is why I don't look at these wicked people with good eyes. They can mesmerize you. They can reduce you. My elder brother, who should be superior to me, was going from family to family asking, do you have garlic? Let me fry for you. And after frying, even if it is one or two bags, they will not give him money. They will give him some cups of gare. Where will, where will he get the money to prepare the soup? And this is a man that is expected to train me. You don't understand me. So if my elder brother was like that, what becomes of my fate? As if that was not enough. They turned me to a truck pisha. T-R-U-C-K. Truck. In Umaya Central Market. I began to push truck. Not in the backyard. In the open market. The Igbo people that are here, you know what you call Oriya Shion. You push truck. Then this arthritis will come. And your, 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 your neck will swell. Thank God my neck has gone back. Well, it will have been swollen. And when I be talking, I be like, eh, 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 eh. Swollen neck. With muscles. We'll be pushing with the voice of the cross. Brother Emma, Obuna. His father threw away the mother. We are coming from the same village. After, as I was pushing the truck, the money to hire truck finished. I started hiring wheelbarrow. I was pushing wheelbarrow. When the money for wheelbarrow finished, I began to carry people's head, people's load on this head, this very head. You can never understand him. He's a miracle boy. At the time, I began to sell firewood because there was no money again to hire Wilbur. At the time, I began to mix concrete in the name of a labora in this life. There was a time I was hungry and I went to my mother's co-wife and asked her, Dada, Dada, please give me small garlic, let me see. She told her maid, give him small garlic, don't give him spoon because he's not qualified to use her spoon. Aaron, buddy. Look at what happened. One day, uh, and it was on a Sunday. One day, I went to my home church. And I was weeping. I said, God, change my name. Change my name. Give me a key of my life. Do you know, when God gives you a key of your life, you can unlock your blessings. Change my name. Change my condition. God told me, I am not going to answer your prayer. I am going to use you to answer somebody's prayer. Hey, for these three days, I've been fasting and praying. Voice of the cross, brother Emma Obona. The wife was barren for 13 years. If you know his history. God said, now you are asking me for a favor. Rise. Go to his house. They are quarreling. He's quarreling with the wife. Go and tell him that by this time, August 26, he will give him a baby boy. Listen, you know, it is hard to believe. You know why it is hard? Not that God cannot perform miracles. The late Dr. Mobo, if you come from Omai, caught the fallopian tubes of this woman, the two. And if you are a woman, you know that it is impossible for a woman to conceive without fallopian tubes. Are you hearing me? God said, go and tell them. I am going to give them a son by the 26th of August of that year, of that, the following year. I went. When I went to their house, he was quarreling with the wife. 
He said, you will go today. You will go today. Being that my father was the chairman of the meeting that said he must put away his wife because he is now Okoba. Okoba means cock. He cannot lay eggs. That was my father being the chairman. And God is using his child to reverse his judgment. May God use you to change the history of your days. I went to his house and said, Day, day. God told me to tell you that he's going to give you a son by 26th day of August. Let me say it in my language. August. And the man replied, I'm going to interpret it. He replied, If I, that's my name, my vernacular name. If I, if I, go and tell that you are God. I've been believing everything. I will not believe this one. He was right. With man, it is impossible. But with God, am I communicating? Listen. That day I told him, Your wife will conceive with or without Philippian tubes. But she will not give birth to that child except I appear in the in the labor room. I went and forgot it. Exactly 26th of August, there was labor. And I was somewhere you cannot find me. They traced me. They went to four hospitals. They rejected the woman. Until they came to Ikote Beni Road, where we have St. Mary's being manned by Dr. Obuna. The head of the child was there, but it could not come out. No, no surgery. No CS. God was waiting for the word of the prophet to come to fulfillment. They sought me out where I was in a hideout, telephoning to God. They brought me to that place and they said, Touch the tummy. I touched the tummy and said, He cannot. That's the child, the child's name. In the womb, God gave him a name. Samuel Ikenna Obona. Ikenna! Come out! I left. Exactly 30 minutes, the boy came out. Without fallopian tubes. Without fallopian tubes. If you are a singer, you would hear this track that says, Igo si wo mi de bube. Igo si wo mi de bube. Onye wemle e bube gi. E bube gi zuru wa e bube gi. Ima ni de bube ezele. E hu wo mnezia ni de bube. I de bube. Igo si wo mi. That is the track. That was the song composed for this. Then, when they were about to dedicate to him, they said you must be there so that NTA will make interview with you. I said I will be there because I have not appeared on the television before. <laughs> God said don't go there. Listen, God said don't go there. I said I will be there. None of my family members had entered television before. I will go. God said okay, let's see now. I mounted my motorcycle and I was going a pole to where they were going to dedicate the child. God blew his hair. I fell down on my motorcycle. Nothing hit me. Look at this place. That is the mark. I was a handsome man before. Very handsome before. But my glass pierced the hair. You will see it. Then, when the child was weaned and he grew up, God told me, go again and tell him, you are going to have a a set of twins. He said, if I equal them, equal them, equal them, equal them, equal them. <laughs> they are no more in Nigeria. They are now in America. But let me tell you that the woman is having seven children now without fallopian tubes. It shall happen in your house. It shall happen in your house. It shall happen in your house. My driver is here. 
and I said it either Thursday or on Friday, that somebody from Enwenegi, Abba, after 21 years of marriage, called me on phone and said, are you there? Man of God said something. Are you there? I said, yes. Say, the child you prayed out of altar, I've gotten twins now. A boy and a girl. After 21 years, I am talking to some people here. That lingering problem, by the reason of this message and testimonies, shall be taken care of. These grown-up ladies who had not married, it will interest you to tell you that my YS president, who is as old as a woman, after prayers, asked my driver, <laughs> I called the YS, all of them, the old ones and the new ones. I said, kneel down. Today, after today, from now to March, all of you here, I don't want to see anybody. I will push you out to get married. The oldest woman, so to speak, who has a school o, WM, but a YS, came on Thursday of last week previous week rather, and said, Daddy, give me traveling paper. One deaconess is calling me that his brother wants to marry me. I laughed too. <laughs> I said, look at though. You see, this marriage changes voice. But when you see her ordinarily, she will talk like a woman. But now the marriage is coming about. The Daddy, <laughs> the Lord shall change your voice and let me say this again God has anointed me for this service and he told me preach to my people liberate, bless open and raise them from their dust today by the reason of this message you are raised you are raised you are raised. Who among you is having a lingering problem? After God used me to bless Emmanuel Obonna, he said, Oh, yeah, get away. Go to Gweke. You know, this thing that happened to me, they stitch it. God said, because of your headiness, because of your disobedience, I'm sending you to Gweke, and that is Bend, the area. Very bushy. There is a woman that contracted leprosy. She ma got married for three months, and her skin changed. She was sent to home. God said, go with this blood. I went with the blood. And when I reached, when I went to the motor park, I had no money. They will say, work, work, work. I say, I don't, say, move, move. I entered without money. When they came to that very compound, they dropped me and began to move without asking me money. And when I came there, look at the woman weeping. God is my witness. Weeping. She had been thrown out by the husband because she married for only three months. I say, God, this one, what? Amen. That. Opo. Leprosy. How would I do this? Please, allow me. Abu miyambu Kangwa randyoche Abu miyambu Forget it. Abu God does not change. That is the meaning of this, this song. He told the old Israelites, I am that I am. He told the New Testament saints, I am still who I am. He is telling this church today, I am whom I am. And I went there. When I went there, I saw that woman. God said, take the mud, the sand from their land, put it in a bucket, give to her to go and bath. I said, eh? And I did what the Lord told me. That was on a Wednesday. Masundaria. She went. Took the bucket of the water. First, 
Wednesday, Thursday morning, she took small. Nothing happened. Friday morning, she took small. Nothing happened. Saturday, Sunday, she never came to church. Monday, she took small. Tuesday, it was remaining small after the bath. It remained the mud. She became annoyed. And they took the bucket and poured on in her hair. The leprosy left her. Father, I stand like Moses of the old. And I talk to your people in person. Open your eyes and look at me. Like Moses of the old, I'm speaking to you. These Egyptians you saw before you came to the same service. These Egyptians you saw in the morning. These Egyptians you saw yesterday. These Egyptians you saw last week, last month, last year. By the anointing of today's message, you shall see them no more. You shall see them no more. You shall see them no more. Any disease, any ailment, any sickness that is represented here, any problem, be it short doors, be it poverty, be it unemployment, whatever thing it is, by the reason of today's gathering, you are settled in the name of Jesus Christ. You are settled in the name of Jesus. Those that are owing. Those that are owing. Those that are owing. And those that are owed. Father, people that their land has been snatched from them by the reason of recovery. May you recover them all for them in the name of Jesus. Settle them. Put songs on their lips. Put laughter on their tongues. May they have songs of testimony. May they dream good dreams. May you actualize the life of purpose. In the name of Jesus. Thank you Jesus for taking care. For in Jesus name I pray.